Do you need a lot of gear for stacking gold and silver, maybe even collecting coins? Not really, but this video will break down five must have items under $30 that I own for coin collecting and stacking, and most importantly, why? Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. When it comes to stacking gold and silver and even collecting coins, do you really need any equipment? Well, it depends. Do you handle collectible coins? Are you buying from sketchy sources and you need to test the metals? How do you store your metals and collectible coins? If you don't care about any of this, I doubt you'll care about the items mentioned in this video. But I would argue most collectors like a little bit of order, maybe even have a little OCD, and they care for their stack and collection. If you're interested in purchasing any of the items I'm about to list, I have links for all the items down in the description below. If you use any of these links, I receive a very, very, very tiny commission that goes back into helping this channel and making videos for you. It costs nothing extra for you to use these links. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get to the items. First on this list is some sort of magnifying glass or jeweler's loop. If you just stack bullion, this item really isn't necessary. However, if you're into collecting, these are a must have. Of course, you need to have a discerning eye and know what to look for when using the jeweler's loop, but a loop will help you look at those subtle details you might miss with the naked eye, especially those extremely fine scratches or polishing marks, which indicate the coin has been clean or altered. One huge thing I like about the magnifying glass and the jeweler's loop that I own is the lighting feature. These are battery powered. Coin shows might not have the best lighting and it's nice to have the option to see those hidden details just a little bit more. My jeweler's loop also has a black light option, which is not working at the moment and I think it's just due to a low battery. I use gloves if I'm handling collectible gold and silver coins in the raw form. Modern bullion, no matter where it comes from, is minted in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, every single year. And I do not use gloves on these items. It doesn't mean I'm mishandling my gold and silver. It just means that I'm not going to lessen the value of the coin if I'm handling it around the edge. For modern collectible gold and silver coins, I'll handle with gloves because fingerprints will lessen the value and appeal. This item is necessary if you're handling collectible coins, but for bullion, it's really up to you. But I don't think it's a must. If you're really paranoid, just wash your hands thoroughly before handling. I rarely use gloves, but I'm always happy to have them around when I need them. The two previous items might help collectible coin buyers, but this next item is a must have for all. A small scale. You can weigh modern gold and silver, and since we know what one troy ounce is in grams, 31.1 grams, as well as the weights of collectible coins that are out there, we can use these numbers as one way to test the authenticity of the metals that we have. Another way to test metals is with a neodymium magnet. These are very powerful magnets which react with counterfeit coins and bars. Silver and gold will react with magnets, but it won't stick to them like it will with the counterfeits. You really should be buying from legitimate sources who test their metals with an XRF. These are very expensive x-ray machines which analyze an object's metal content and will tell you the composition. Sigma machines can be easily fooled. I've seen these give false readings on a real piece of silver, and I've seen them give a positive reading to a counterfeit piece. Sigmas are better than nothing, but I would be extremely leery buying from a source who only uses a Sigma to test the metal. If you buy any sort of graded bullion or collectible coin, you need to get yourself a grading box. When coins are shipped out for grading, the grading agency sends the graded coins back in a box like this. NGC will have a different box, of course. These boxes are amazing for storing your graded coins. It protects the holder from being scratched or chipped, and it keeps your coins organized. If you don't buy any graded coins, you really don't need these. But if you do, these are a must. I found them on Amazon for a pretty decent price. Uh, the price also can fluctuate, so be uh, keep an eye out for that. But you could also check with your LCS. Your coin shop might have a ton of these lying around, which they are willing to sell to you for less than Amazon. I've done this. I've gotten, like, they might be a little bit dirty, dinged up, but it's just a box to hold the metal. 
not the metals. It's just the box to hold your graded coins to protect them. And it never hurts to ask them. Last on this list are two items which are an absolute must for both stackers and collectors. This is coin tubes and coin capsules. I don't know anyone who isn't a complete psycho who doesn't use these in one form or another. There are a ton of coin capsules out there, huge variety, and I've covered the best type of coin capsule to buy. And that brand is airtight. They are extremely well made and they don't sit loose around your coin. There's a ton of other brands out there and they're not as good. So just keep an eye out for that. And they might be cheaper and there's a reason for that is because you're getting a lot less quality. Often paired with the airtight capsules are these capsule tubes. These are really amazing. I like storing my collector coins in these as well as some bullion coins. Um, I like to get at least one year of the maples and buffaloes every year and these go into the capsules. The rest will go in raw into a tube like this. This is a tube for gold buffaloes from the US Mint. I just stack my raw bullion in here if I don't put it in a capsule. And here's a pro tip. If you don't have a full tube and you're filling up a few every month or one every month, to prevent the raw coins from banging around or flopping when you move it, fill up the space with a soft material like styrofoam. It adds a little bit of pressure. It keeps the coins from sloshing around. I also like using these generic tubes, which lock up really well. And you can find coin capsules and tubes in a variety of sizes. There's probably one out there for every one of your coin needs. I think I've even used like a penny tube, a tube for pennies to store my raw 10th ounce eagles. They're a little bit smaller than a penny, but it still works. Just look up the size of your gold and silver and compare it to some modern change to find the right fit for you. If you can't find that airtight capsule in the specific coin size you're looking for. There's uh, some, and I don't use this as a derogatory term, but just like foreign bullion, um, that is just a little bit smaller, like the 10th ounce maples are going to be smaller than 10th ounce eagles. And I don't know um, if they make coin capsules for those. I imagine they do. But when you get up to the larger sizes, like the half ounce and full ounce, there's going to be definitely coin capsules for those. Tubes are just one of the best ways to organize and store both collectible coins and your bullion. These are five items I feel all stackers and collectors should have. Do you need any of these items? It's really up to you, but most of these items are so cheap, it doesn't hurt to get them. If I was short on funds and just could only get a few things off this entire list, the very first thing would be the coin capsules and coin tubes. They're just a must for me. But I've seen people even scoff at the use of coin capsules. Well, if you enjoy raw dogging life, you probably won't want those either. I like my things pristine and organized, and I'm sure you do too. Your time is your most precious asset, and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.